A very popular phenomenon with real life problems is exponential growth or exponential decay. We see this happen in so many different places um, that, that it, it deserves its own discussion. So let, let's think for a moment here. When when does a quantity grow exponentially? Like what what's the underlying cause of exponential growth? Uh, here's the underlying cause. It's when the rate of change of that quantity is proportional to that quantity itself. Now, and that might sound confusing, but, but it's simpler than it sounds. Let, let me give you a couple of different examples. Think about like population, for instance. Uh, we often see exponential population growth, but, but let's look closer. Why do populations grow exponentially? Well, you know, if you have a, a certain number of population, as they start to have children, then the number of uh, people that can produce children grows, right? Because eventually uh, they can produce children as well as their children over time. And so when you have uh, the rate of change in the population being proportional to the size of the population, that's when you get uh, exponential growth. Um, you know, you would uh, say clearly that there would be more babies born every day in a large city versus some rural city. Well, why? It's because there's more people in a large city to have babies that would uh, then would um, be childbearing people in a rural city. So when the size of the population or whatnot um, influences the rate of change of the population, that's when you're getting exponential growth. Uh, think of a simple, it's kind of silly example. Uh, you put two rabbits in a forest. Well, there starts off with two, but then there's four. But then those four rabbits can multiply to 16. And the 16 can grow to, you know, 32 and so on and so forth. And you get this exponential explosion uh, due to population growth or because the rate of change is proportional to the size of the population. Now, that's not the only applications though by far. Uh, think about money. Think about um, putting money in a savings account. Um, you put in, you know, $100. It earns a certain amount of interest over the first year. Well, during the second year, you're actually earning interest off of the $100 and the interest earned that you earn from the first uh, fr from the first year. So the rate of change is going to, again, be proportional to how much money you have in the account. The more money you have in the account, the rate of change in the size of the, your bank account is going to grow. That's why you see retirement accounts will often have this model. People will put in money uh, as they're working throughout their working career, but only during the last five or 10 years does the uh, the amount in their retirement account spike, right? Because it's uh, changing at an increasing rate because they're continually putting money you know, into the savings account. So this is the fundamental principle behind exponential growth. Now, how do we write that mathematically, though? Well, here's, here's how we're going to do this. Here's our model for exponential growth. We're going to write down exactly what we just said. The rate of change in a population or a quantity, uh, it doesn't have to be population, this could be any quantity, over time is proportional to the amount of that quantity. So we'll say time uh, is equal to k times p. Let's read that one more time. When you take a derivative that's indicating the rate of change, if you're differentiating with respect to t, time, this is the change in quantity over time. So that could be change in dollars over time or change in population over time. This rate of change is equal to uh, or is proportional to the size of the uh, whatever quantity is that you're measuring. All right, so this is um, your model for exponential growth. Some some real life situation that has exponential growth will have this model. Now, what what is the K influence? Well, the K is what we call the growth rate, the growth rate. Obviously, you could have differing types of exponential population growth. You know, if it was some you know terrible disease, it could have a very fast 
exponential growth, right? You could put so many bacteria in a Petri dish, come back in an hour, and it's just exploded with bact more bacteria. That would have a very, very high growth rate. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, the population growth of a, you know, small town or something like that, it might have exponential growth, but very, very slowly. Uh, think in terms of like exponential decay. It's the same model. If this growth rate is negative, then the decay rate um, or the growth rate will be negative. It'll be exponential decay, not growth. Think of like radioactive decay. That's a very popular problem. We'll do an example on that in a later video. Um, you plant radioactive material in the ground, it's going to decay extremely slowly. So you might get a growth rate of negative decay. It's negative. 0. 0.000182 or something like that. So the size of this uh, K value, positive or negative, indicates how fast your quantity is growing or decaying. Now, this is what we call a differential equation. The reason we call it that is because it's simply an equation that has a derivative in it. And so we would like to solve this. All right, so how do we solve a differential equation? Well, we're going to use a technique that we actually haven't covered yet. It'll actually come more specifically in a later video, but we're going to give you a little preview of a, of a new method that we're going to look at. We're going to solve this differential equation using something called separation of variables. It's a very common technique to solve first order differential equations like this guy is. So to do separation of variables, the idea is very simple. We're going to try to separate the variable P uh, from the variable T. So we're going to try to put a line in the sand and we're going to try to put all the P's on one side and the T's on the other side. Thus the name separation of variables. Let's do that. Uh, for this one, I think it's pretty simple. Um, the K is a constant and it can stay on the right hand side. Let's move the DT, multiply it to the right hand side, and let's divide the P to the left to be over here with DP. So we'll have one over P DP equals K DT. We have just separated the variables. All right, now what do we do? Well, the, the main idea behind separation of variables is once you've separated them, you can actually integrate both sides now. That's, that's the next algebra step. So help me with that algebra. What's the integral of 1 over P dP? Well, hopefully you remember from Calc 1, this would be the natural log of the absolute value of P. And the integral of K dT would be KT plus capital C because this is an indefinite integral. So this is kind of our solution. Now we would actually prefer to actually have solve for P, not natural log of P. So is there any way to get the P by itself? Currently there's a natural log in the way. Absolutely. What we're going to do is we'll raise E to the left hand side as well as E raised to the right hand side and these will cancel. All right, so let's summarize this now. Let's, let's finish this out, group all these together. We would get on the left-hand side, P of T, P of T would be equal to, uh, let's see, there's an E to the KT, right? E to the KT. And if you remember your properties about exponentials, this is equivalent to E to the KT times E to the C. This is a property of exponential functions. Now E is a constant and C is a constant. So a constant to a constant is simply a new constant. So what I'm going to do is out front here, I'm going to put our new just capital C as opposed to E to the C. If you didn't catch all that, you might want to rewind that video a little bit and watch that a couple of times, let that sink in. But nevertheless, this guy will be the solution. This will be the solution to that differential equation. And lo and behold, check out what is this guy? This is an exponential graph. And so uh, this is an exponential function. And so the solution to this model where the rate of change is proportional to the size of the quantity, the solution is an exponential function. And uh, we see some influencing factors. Um, K, as we said earlier, is going to be the growth rate, the growth rate. 
And uh, what capital C? That's important to know as well. Well, uh, it turns out it is the initial amount. Now that, that's pretty open-ended. It kind of depends on what your problem is talking about. It might be the initial population of a certain city. It might be the initial investment in a bank account. Uh, it could be anything. It could be the initial radioactive quantity, uh, um, radioactive material that you plant in the ground. It could be anything, but it's your starting amount. Now I can um, justify that for you. If you let T be zero, your starting time, what is E to the zero? E to the zero is one, one times C is C. So your quantity would start off at C. All right, now what's P of T? Um, this is your amount, this is your amount after time T. So what is uh, amount? I have no idea. It could be uh, a, amount of money, amount of people, amount of radioactive material, it could be the amount of anything that's um this changing exponentially uh the value of your depreciating car that you just bought it could be anything but um but it, nevertheless this is your model for exponential growth in decay so commit this guy to memory um now from here we have to i think it would be good to do some examples of exponential growth and exponential decay but um hopefully this is good at least to get you started uh thinking about what exponential growth and decay is and what causes it